Hi everybody, I'm Giles Laval and welcome back to Python from Scratch, a video series for NetTuts where we're learning the Python programming language. This is the fifth and final episode in the series, and today we're going to use everything we've learned in the previous four lessons to create a simple dynamic website with Python. In the previous lessons we've covered some essential skills, but we haven't actually learned how to use them for web development. That's what we're looking at today. If you know some Python but have never used it for web development, then this is the right tutorial for you. But if you don't know any Python at all, then I really recommend you go back and look at the rest of this series to bring you up to speed. Because everything we're doing today relies on those previous episodes. So with that out of the way, let's get started. Something to think about first is what's actually needed to power a website. The fundamental process behind a website is that you have a program that accepts a request for a URL, then processes it and serves up a response in the form of a HTML page along with all the other resources a web page needs like images and style sheets. In languages like PHP this is easy because it's a specifically designed web language so all of that is done for you and all you need to do is code the functionality specific to your site. However, in other, more general purpose languages like Python it's not that simple. If you wanted to you could write a Python program that does all of this but that's a lot of work and it's already been done many times by a lot of people, so why go to the trouble? These programs that serve up web pages like this are called web frameworks and we're going to use one today for making our website. So there's a lot of good web frameworks out there, but probably the most popular Python one is Django. This is what we're going to use today because of all the ones I've tried it's definitely the most feature rich and also there are some Django tutorials here on NetTuts so if this beginner intro interests you you can move on straight away to some more advanced stuff and I will put a link to those tutorials in the text of this article. However there's a really big selection and you don't have to stick with Django so uh, let's just take a quick look at some of the other options available to you. There is this one called WebPy, uh, it's a lot smaller than Django and has less features as a result it was actually made by one of the guys at Reddit and it was used to power Reddit for several years so it's clearly very capable. It's not actually used anymore and it is less feature rich than uh, Django but if you're looking for something even simpler then WebPy is a good way to go. There's a framework called Grok which is uh, it's more advanced than WebPy and it probably has uh, feature parity with Django or you know getting quite close at least so if you're looking for an alternative and you don't like Django then Grok is a good option. There's one called Turbo Gears. Uh, in the past this ha didn't have a great reputation because a lot of the documentation was bad and it changed really frequently, meaning that uh, your the programs you wrote in it had to change as well and making it difficult to update. But recently it's uh, it's apparently got a lot better, so it's, it's definitely a viable option if you don't like Django. Now obviously there's even more frameworks than this, but I'll be sure to put links and descriptions to all of them in the text of this article. So now we've had a look at some of the options, let's focus on Django because that's what we're going to use today. So obviously the first thing we need to do is set up Django with Python for us to make websites with. And you're probably going to want it in two places. One, you'll want it on your local computer for developing and testing your websites. And then you'll also want it on a web server for deploying those websites to the public. And we're going to look at both of those scenarios today. But we're going to begin by getting it installed on our local machine. It's a pretty simple process but obviously you will need Python installed for this so if you don't have it installed then go back to the first tutorial and you can learn how to get it installed there. We're going to install it from the terminal and don't worry if you don't understand these commands, they're not Python. It is useful however to have a basic knowledge of the terminal if you plan to run a website with Python just for maintenance and stuff. So there are some tutorials on the subject here on NetTuts and I'll make sure to link to those as well. Uh, another quick thing to remember is that Django doesn't work with Python 3, so you need to be using Python 2.7 or earlier to continue, like we decided on in the first episode. So if you're on a Mac or Linux, then just open the terminal. This won't work with the Windows command prompt, so I recommend something like Sigwin to uh, run through these steps. So I will open the terminal, and first we need to download the uh, source archive. So we're going to use wget to download it and we need to uh, find the link so we will go to the downloads page and then copy that link and I'll just paste it in and let's download that and if you just give it a few seconds you should have Django downloaded to your machine so this is just the uh, source archive so we need to actually extract the files and we can do that with tar 
So uh, I think the option is Z XZVF, and then just type the beginning, and you can use uh, tab to auto complete the file name. Okay, and hit enter, and you should see a load of stuff appear on the screen as it extracts all the files. So we need to change into that directory. So cd, and if we type the name and hit tab, then we can change into the directory. And then finally you need to install it, which is just one more command. So you need to do python setup.py and install, and hit enter. And that should run through and install it on your computer. You may need to run that command as uh, a super user by putting sudo before that command if you get a permission denied error. And then finally, if you want to, you can just clean up the install files by uh, changing out of that directory with cd dot dot, and then you can remove the files. So we can do uh, recursively remove the Django folder, and that will remove everything we downloaded, and then we can remove the uh, Django archive. And then that should all, all be gone, and you'll have to Django on your system. So now all we need to do is test if Django works for us. Type Python to enter the prompt, and then we are going to use the import statement to uh, import Django to Python, just like we learnt in the uh, third lesson. So we can type from Django import get version, and this gets the get version function for us from the Django module. And that's worked, so it's all looking good, and we can now just run the get version command, and we've got Django 3.1, so we should see 3.1. And there we go, that's worked. So if uh, all the steps have worked up to this point, you now have Django installed on your system, and you are ready to do some local uh, development of your websites with Python. So we'll take a look at installing Python and Django on a remote web server later in the lesson, but for now, let's have a look at uh, creating our first project with it and starting to build a site. And I'm just going to change to my documents directory. So now we can run a command to start our first Django project. And for today, let's create a simple blog as a test exercise. So we uh, access the Django admin file, and this was installed when we first uh, installed uh, Django. So it's called djangoadmin.py, and then we will pass in the start project parameter, and it will uh, start a project for us. And then you just need to give it a name. So we'll just call it first blog. You can call this whatever you like. And that's created our first Django project for us, which is just a folder containing some template Python files. So now we can change into that folder and it should be called uh, first blog. Okay, and if we list the files, we can see that we have got uh, three files there. So let's take a look at what all of those do. So this first file, init.py, tells Python that this folder is a package, and we saw these in the third lesson. It allows Python to import all of these scripts in the folder as modules. Uh, Manage.py isn't actually part of your website, it's a utility script that you run from the command line, and it contains lots of functions for managing your site. Uh, settings.py obviously contains all of your website settings. Django doesn't use XML files for configuration or anything like that, everything is Python. So this file is just a load of variables that define settings for your site. Uh, finally, urls.py is a file that maps URLs to specific pages. So for example, it could map yourwebsite.com slash about to an about us page. And whenever a user clicks on a link or types one in the address bar, it gets managed by this and sent to the appropriate uh, destination. So these are the basic files we've got so far. However, none of these files on their own make a functional website. And for that, we need apps. Apps are where you actually write the code that makes your website work. But before we take a look at them, we need to understand a bit about Django's design principles. So let's talk about that now. First, Django is an MVC framework, and that stands for Model View Controller. Django actually calls itself an MTV framework, which stands for Model Template View. It's a slightly different approach from MVC, but fundamentally they're very similar. Anyway, MVC is an architectural pattern that provides a way of structuring your projects. It separates the code that's used to process data from the code that manages the user interface. Secondly, Django subscribes to the DRY, or Don't Repeat Yourself philosophy, which means that you should never be writing code that performs a certain task more than once. For example, in our blog, if we wrote a feature that, say, picked a random article from the archive, and then we implemented this feature on multiple pages, we wouldn't code it again each time it was needed. We would code it once, and then implement it on each page. This also applies to work other people have done. 
For example, Django includes an administration system for managing your website, and also an authentication system if users need to register to use your site. In the past, when I've written websites using PHP, for example, I've made these systems from scratch. In Django, it's already been done, so there's no need to repeat it. You can just use what's provided. OK, so how does this relate back to the concept of apps? Well, apps allow you to write your website in a DIY style. Each project, like the one we have here, can contain multiple apps, and conversely, each app can be part of multiple projects. Using the example from earlier, this means that if we made another site in the future that also needed a random page feature, we wouldn't have to write it all over again. We could just import the app from this project. Because of this, it's important each app serves one distinct purpose. If you write all the functionality of your site within one app and then need to use part of it later again, you'd have to import it all. For example, if you were making an e-commerce website in the future, you wouldn't want to import all of the blog features. However, if you make one app for this random page feature and then another app containing the blog publishing system, you could pick and choose the bits you needed if you ever relied on them again. This also means that within the site the code is well organised. If you want to change a feature, you don't have to search through one massive file looking for the function you need. You can go to the relevant app and change it without worrying about interfering with anything else. OK, so that's pretty much all you need to know about apps and Django's design conventions, so let's go ahead and make our first one. And this is where the manage.py script comes in. We can use it to create our first app. So in the terminal, we are going to type python manage.py and then we're going to pass the start app parameter and then we're going to give our app a name and I'm just going to call it blog because this is where we're going to create all of the publishing functionality. And we now have an app called blog. We should now have a folder here called blog and this is our first app. What it's going to do is get blog posts from a database and display them in a page. So we'll list the files and see that it's there. So just type ls and you can see we now have a directory called blog and that is our app. OK, let's uh, change into the folder and list the files to see what it contains. So I'll cd into blog and then list these files. OK, again, we've got an init.py file to make it a package and three other files, models, tests and views. We don't need to worry about tests for now, but the other two are important. Models and views are the M and V parts of MVC. So in models, we define our data structures. If you've ever worked with PHP before, you might have used phpMyAdmin to create some MySQL tables and then written out your SQL queries manually in your PHP scripts. In Django, this is all much easier because it's abstracted for you by these models. We define all the data structures we need in this models file and then run a command and all the necessary databases are made for us. When you want to access that data, you go via these models by calling methods on them instead of running raw queries. Now this is very helpful because Django can use several database programs. We're going to use MySQL for today because it's the most powerful and it's what most web hosts provide, but if later you wanted to change, then all of the code you wrote would still be valid because it's been abstracted by these models. You wouldn't have any uh, code that's specific to a certain database program. In other languages, if you wanted to switch to uh, SQLite or something, you would have to rewrite the code that accesses your database. So what models will we need here? Well, for a blog, we'll need a table of posts. And this will have several fields with uh, one for the title, one for the body text, uh, the author, the time it was written, and so on. So a real blog would obviously have comments, but that's beyond the scope of this lesson. Also, if we weren't using a framework, we'd need to create a table of users and then a system to make some of them administrators who can post blogs. However, Django does all of that for us, as we just discussed. And obviously, we're following the DIY principle. So today, we're just going to make the one table, and that is going to be for our blog posts. We will uh, get back to that later after we've discussed the views file. So in the views file, we write the code that actually generates the web pages. This ties all the other parts together. When the user types a URL or clicks on a link, it gets sent by the URL script that we saw earlier to the views script, which then gets relevant data via the models, processes it, and passes it into a template, which finally gets served up as the page the user sees. Uh, now don't worry about templates. We'll take a look at those later. They're actually the easiest part. They're just uh, HTML. So let's define our models now, and then we can move on to uh, working with the views. Right, so we've changed to our uh, project folder, and you can see the blog app is here. So we'll open that, and then define our models, which means we need to edit this file. So uh, open that up in your text editor or IDE of choice, and we'll see what we've got there. 
Okay, so it's a pretty uh, simple boilerplate to start with. It uh, imports the uh, models class from the Django framework, and then we can define our models here. So remember we said we wanted uh, models that represent one table in a database, and that's going to be of blog posts. And to start with, we're going to have author, post title, post content, and a timestamp for it. And we can, we can always add more later, but that's what we're going to have for now. So uh, let's go ahead and define those. Okay, so the syntax for defining our models is very simple. To create a certain table, you create a class with the name of the table you want. So if we want a table of posts, we can create a class called posts. And you'll remember all of this from the previous lesson on object-oriented programming. This class actually uh, inherits from the Django models class. So it inherits from models.model. And that means it's now a child class and has access to all of the uh, available methods within it. OK, and then within it, we just uh, assign a load of variables to uh, be all of our different fields. So our first field can be author, and we set that equal to a uh, certain class, which is models.char field. Now, there are lots of other types of fields. For example, if it was a number, it would be models.integer field. But this is a string. It's going to be a string of characters that represents the name. So at the moment, we're going to go for char field. And uh, it has to have a property, which is the maximum length. It can accept some other ones, but this is the only required one. And uh, it's good to choose a suitable number of characters for an author's name, how maybe uh, not many people have a name longer than 30. So we'll say max length equals 30 characters. And uh, that's all you need to do. You now have a field for the author of the post. And we will create one for the title. We'll say title equals models dot char field and we'll set the max length to 100 for this one. Okay, so let's create another one called uh, body text which will contain the main uh, text of the uh, blog post. So we'll say body text equals models and this one is going to be a text field because uh, just a few characters isn't enough for obviously a whole blog post. So we're going to create one that can accept uh, a large amount of text. So we'll call this one it's going to be text field. <clears throat> and this one doesn't need to take any options. And then finally, we are going to have a uh, timestamp. So we'll say timestamp equals models dot date time field. And uh, this doesn't need to take any options either. Now, if you remember back to the third lesson when we were working with uh, the different modules, you remember we can uh, use the date time module to convert these date time objects into strings, which is what we'll do when we create the website. So we'll have uh, a number of milliseconds representing the time, and then we'll convert that into a string with the current time that gets displayed on the page. So we've got our models here, but these are just a description of the type of data we've got, and we need to make an actual database from them. However, first we need a database running, and we're going to use MySQL. On an actual web server, this wouldn't be a problem because they always have it pre-installed. But uh, with a package manager, it's very easy to install on your system. OK, so let's open up the terminal and uh, install MySQL. Just use any package manager to do it. Uh, if you're on Mac, then you probably want to install Homebrew. Um, and I'll put a link to the uh, download instructions for that in the text of this tutorial. If you're on any uh, Linux system, there'll be a package manager included with your system. So uh, let's install MySQL now. I'm just going to type brew install and MySQL and that should do everything for us. So we just wait for all of this process to finish. So that took about three minutes so I'm going to edit out a bit of that process there but if everything went successfully you should uh, be at this screen now and it should say that uh, everything was installed. Okay so now that we've got Django installed and MySQL as our database there's just one final thing we need to install to uh, finish off and that is the Python library for interfacing with MySQL which is called MySQL DB. And we're going to install that using a different package manager to Homebrew because Homebrew doesn't have it in its default uh, set of available packages. So we're going to use something called Easy Install. And uh, I'll put a link on how to get that set up on your system in the text of the article along with all the others. But uh, once you've got it installed, you just need to type Easy Install. And then the package we want is MySQL Python. Now I already have it installed, so it won't give me a message for all of the installation process, but it should for you if you haven't got it already. So we'll run through that. 
now you should have uh, the MySQL Python library installed on your system. So that's all the software we actually need. So now we need to try and uh, run MySQL so that we can, uh, can interface with databases on it. So the first thing you need to do is run the MySQL server, which you can do just by running MySQLD. And that should start the server running. So we've got MySQL installed and running, but by default it comes with a user called root with no password, and that's not very safe, so we need to do something about that. So we'll open up a new tab, and we need to log in to MySQL with our root user. So we're going to do uh, MySQL, the username, dash u, is root, and then for you, that should be fine. All you need to do is hit enter. However, I've already set up a password for my uh, root user, so I need to enter my password. So I will, uh, I'll put the dash p thing to, uh, to prompt it for the password. And then it'll ask me for the password I chose, which for this tutorial I just chose NatTuts. So that should be fine. And now we're in the MySQL prompt. Now, obviously, you would have been able to log in without the password, and you don't currently have one. So we need to set a password for this user. And for this, we can just use a simple command. So we're going to give, give ourselves a root password. So I'll just paste this command in. And this is just a MySQL command to uh, manage the users. So I'm giving our root user a password of NetTuts. And you can choose a password of whatever you like, but this will do for now. This is what we're going to use as the example for the rest of the uh, rest of the tutorial. So I will do that. And then you just need to run a command to uh, make sure this takes effect. Sorry, I spelled that wrong. OK, and now we should be all set up with our, with our root user and a safe password. So now we can create the database for our blog. OK, so now you should have a user with a password, so we need to log out and log back in again with our new password. So we're just going to quit, and then we're going to run the same command again. But this time, you will have to put in a password. Obviously, I had to before, but that's just because I was already set up. So then we put in the password, and now we're logged in, running with a user with a password, and we're ready to uh, create the database. So let's create a database. Just type create database, and we will call it first blog. Um, if this doesn't work for me, it's because I've already made one, but uh, this should work for you if you've got nothing installed yet. So there we go. It says the database exists, but that should be fine. That should all work for you. And we now have a database called first blog. OK, and we can quit out again. This is all we need to do for our Django project to be able to run. So let's go now and uh, have a go running our Django project. OK, I have a new tab. I'm going to change to my documents directory and then change into the first blog folder we made. And I'm going to try and run our Django server. So the thing you need to know about this is this is not the uh, final Django server. This is a development server, and it's built into Django, and it allows you to test your code when you're still working on your project. It's not a very powerful server, and it means when you go into production, you don't want to be using it. So make sure you're not using this technique to run your finished website. We're just going to use it now for development. Uh, to use it, it's as simple as invoking Python. And there is one little, uh, one little detail here. Um, the library we installed for interfacing with MySQL has probably installed to Python 2.6. And as we know from the first lesson, we upgraded to Python 2.7. So this isn't going to work if we just type Python. We need to use an older version just for this, uh, just for this one script. So we're going to use Python 2.6. We're going to use the manage.py script that we saw earlier in the lesson. And we're going to pass it the command run server to uh, run our basic Django server. Now this will probably give us an error, but we'll see what happens. OK, we've got a problem. We haven't set up our Django project to work with our MySQL database yet. So we need to go and fix that now. So if you go to the, uh, your project directory and find settings.py, open it up in a text editor, you should see this. Now, if you scroll down to where it says databases, we need to configure it for what we just set up. So if you remember, the name of the database was uh, first blog, when we just went and created one just a few minutes ago. Uh, our username was root. And the password is whatever you set it to be. I set it to be NetTuts. OK, and the final thing we need to do is make sure that it's using the MySQL backend, because it can use lots of different things. You can see it can use uh, SQLite or uh, Oracle SQL. So we just need to change that to be MySQL. And that should actually have a quote there. So uh, that's just a problem with my one. That's uh, not something you should have to worry about. OK, so once you've got it set up with all of your settings, we'll save that. And let's have another go at running our script. OK, that's great. We've got our Django project running on the development server with no errors. So in future, when you want to uh, run your development server, you just need to run this one command. So you just need to do uh, python2.6 manage.py run server. That's all you need to do. However, 
Um, when you start up your computer, the MySQL process probably won't be running. So if you remember earlier, we just typed MySQL D to get that running. Uh, you might need to do that first so that it runs, and then you can run the uh, Django server. You could actually set it up so that uh, MySQL runs every time you turn your computer on, but a lot of times you'll be using it and you won't even need MySQL, so that's a bit uh, wasteful of resources. So uh, that's not something we're going to do today, but it is an option if you are doing Django development every single day. But anyway, you just need to know that if it doesn't work, the most likely problem is you need to start MySQL by typing MySQL D. So anyway, with that all, all out of the way, we can uh, go and check out our running server. So uh, as you can see, we can find it at this address, which is the uh, local host IP, and it's running on port 8000. So we can open up our browser and go to this address, and we'll ref refresh the page. And there we go, we've got our very first Django powered page, as it says. So all that's left to do now is customize it and turn it into our own website with uh, all our blog functionality. So uh, let's take a look at how we do that now. Now, your process to get to this point might not have run quite as smoothly, and if you do run into any errors with any of the software we're using to install or configure this, uh, this particular Django installation, then uh, please uh, leave a message in the comments and I'll, I'll do my best to help you out, but uh, in all honesty, there are so many different things that can go wrong with it. Probably your best bet is just uh, doing a quick uh, search for whatever error comes up and, and working from there, but yeah, like I said, if, um, if there's anything you do want to ask about, then I will do my best to answer it, that in the comments. So we don't need the server right now, we can stop it while we do a bit more development on our site. And uh, the next step is to set up the tables within the database we've created using the models we defined earlier. So just uh, control C and, and then we need to run a command which will add all of the models that we created to the database. And if you don't remember, the models were those fields for all the things to do with our blog. So we had uh, an author of the post, the title, the body text, and the timestamp. So these is just a description at the moment, and we need that to actually be tables in the database, not just this abstract representation of it. So there's a command we can run for that. And again, it uses manage.py. So we can run uh, Python, and we're going to use 2.6, and then we will use manage.py. And this time we are going to run syncdb, and that will add all of the fields defined in the models to our database. Every time you update your models, you need to run this command so that the new fields you've added get added to the database. However, it's important to note that this can't actually alter existing uh, records in the database. It can only uh, add new ones. So if you need to change one of the fields, for example, you've got an integer field and you need it to be a varchar or something like that, then you will have to actually go into something like phpMyAdmin, um, alter your MySQL uh, table yourself, and then update the models file to reflect that. And then obviously run the uh, syncdb command again to make sure that they all match up. But uh, yeah, this is the command you'll be using every time you change your models to update the uh, database. So we'll run this now and update our database. Okay, so because this is the first time we've run the command, it's adding uh, additional stuff as well as the models we defined for our blog. It's adding all of the uh, default stuff that lots of sites use that comes with Django. For example, it's adding all of the uh, authentication uh, tables it needs and everything. And for that, it needs a uh, administrator user, so we're going to have to create one. So we'll just uh, put yes, and then we can have the username as whatever you like. Um, it'll probably come up as your username by default. So uh, I'll just go with uh, I'll just go with uh, yeah, Giles is fine for now. And then you can put in an email address so that it's, uh, I guess, in a production site. This is so you can be contacted and stuff. So we don't really need to do this for this. We'll just uh, hit some characters. There we go. And then choose a password. I'll use NatTuts again this time. And there we go. That's all run. Uh, that's all run correctly. And uh, hopefully you didn't get any errors either. So now all of these. Uh, all of these models we can see here, these uh, four fields, they've all been added into our database and they're ready to be used to store some data. So finally, we are actually ready to start uh, working on the logic and structure of our site. Okay, so let's take a look at the files we've got so far. We've got our URLs file, which, uh, as we learned earlier, accepts the incoming requests for a particular URL and tells it which page to serve up. So let's see what we've got in that at the moment. Okay, we don't actually have any URL patterns, so what we need to do is, uh, to start, we need to set it up so that when a request comes in for the root directory of the site, it serves up our home page, our index.html file. And in fact, this default line here will do that nicely. So we just uncomment that line, and this will this particular regular expression uh, redirects the, uh, any like, root directory request to uh, this model we define here. 
Um, this isn't actually right because if you remember, it's called first blog, but the module within it is actually called uh, is called blog. So we need to uh, we need to change that to be first blog dot blog. So that's our project and then our model, and then we uh, go into the views file, which is where we'll respond to this request, and then we're going to call it home, and we'll give that a name of home. So we've got our we've got our very uh, first request there, and now we can actually serve up some content. But uh, so we'll go and look at the uh, views file and uh, make this request actually do something. So go into the blog package and open up views.py. Okay, and as you can see, we've got a completely blank file, so it's up to us to uh, create all of the code here. So um, the first thing we need to do is import the module that's used to uh, render out the response to the pages. So we're going to say from uh, Django dot uh, so shortcuts is the module. We are going to import, and then the particular uh, function we need is render to response. So that is the module we need for actually uh, for responding to all these requests. Okay, then we need to import those models we defined so that we can actually interface with our database and uh, add and retrieve data. So we're going to go from our it was a blog module, and it's the models file. We're going to import. Let's see what the uh, particular table was called. Okay, it's called posts. So from our models file, we're going to import posts. Okay, and now we need to define a function to respond to this request. So we can define a function, and it's the same name as whatever the request was. And remember, the name was home. So we're going to define a home request. And this particular function uh, takes the uh, request argument that gets passed to it when it gets called. And then we need to return a particular page. So we're going to return, and we're going to use this render to response method to render our particular template. So we are going to render to response, and we're going to return index.html for now. That doesn't exist, but that's the next step. We will create that. So that should be all the code you need to serve up your first page. However, the page we are serving up doesn't actually exist yet. So we'll save this out and uh, go and create it, and then see what happens. So within our blog app, we'll create a new directory called templates, and we're going to put some HTML files in there, which it can serve up. So we'll just uh, create a new folder and call that templates. OK, and let's create the index.html file that's going to be served up. So we'll make a new file. And I'm just going to put hello world, because that's all we need to test if it works. And then we'll save that out. Go into first blog, blog, templates, and then save it as index and then choose a HTML file as the type. So just find that there. OK, and we can save that out. All right, and let's go into templates. We've got the file we need. Ah, it's chosen HTML for the extension, uh, HTM for the extension, so we'll change that to HTML. OK, so we should now have everything we need. URLs, we get a request for the root directory. That sends a request to something with the name of home. Then we respond to this home request by rendering out the index.html page that we see here. So that should be all the steps we need. So we just need to start the server again, go back to this, and then uh, go back to the run server command, run that, and then let's open our browser and see what happens. There could be some errors, but uh, maybe it worked first time. OK, so we've got an error, and what's this saying? I can't find the index.html file. OK, now the reason for this error is that we haven't actually told Django where to look for our templates yet. So we need to go into the settings file and uh, fix that. So if we go back to settings, we should go down to the bottom, and you should see something which says template directories. So here we can put the, uh, we can put the path that it serves up our, all our templates from. And if you remember, we put our templates folder as being in the uh, blog app. So it's going to be in blog slash uh, templates, which is what, the, what we named the folder. So that's all you need to put, just a string that defines where to look for the templates. So we can save that out and then go and look at the page now. OK, and we've got uh, hello world, which is coming from our index.html. So we've got Django to serve up our first custom page. OK, so we've got our first page set up. Let's uh, add some actual blog content. So we need to go to our template file for that. And uh, I guess the first thing to do would be to just put in some boilerplate HTML5 code so that we've got the basic structure of our website. So uh, I'm just going to go and uh, copy and paste it in, but you know you can grab it from anywhere, write it yourself, or you maybe use something like the HTML5 boilerplate. You can use whatever you like, but we've just got a basic HTML5 structure here. And uh, yeah, let's uh, start laying out our site. So this is none of this is Python at the moment. This is all HTML. 
So um, the title, we'll just call it, uh, we're calling it first blog at the moment. And then I guess within the container, we're going to want a uh, header. And then this is going to say first blog. And then we're going to want a uh, we're going to want a list of posts. So for each of those posts, we will have a title, and we're going to put that in heading two tags. So that'll be the title. And then I guess we will say uh, we'll say the author and the timestamp then. So if we put uh, if we put in in h3 tags below that, we can put uh, maybe posted on, and then we'll put the date in here. Posted on date by and then author. Now, obviously, they need to be swapped in for the actual names, but we will uh, we'll work on that in a second. We're just laying out the basic structure for the moment. So then we'll close the H3 tag, and then we'll have a paragraph tag where we will put our uh, body text. Now obviously we're going to want to have this uh, format multiple times once for each post, but we're not going to write it out each time. We can actually use Django's uh, templating language to put Python code within this HTML document and then use a for loop to uh, print out lots of them. But uh, that's, all, that's all we need to do for now, so uh, save that out and uh, that's fine. And then let's uh, go and uh, see if that's updated perfectly. Okay, so that's all, that's all worked fine. Okay, so we need to actually get the uh, data from our database into this uh, into this template. So how do we do that? Well, with Django, you can embed variables straight into your HTML documents. So uh, you do it with uh, with the following syntax: you use two curly brackets, and then you wrap your variable name. So what we'll have here is we will have a variable called date wrapped in two curly brackets like that, and the same for author. So we'll do that again, and that means we can now use this views file to pass in author and date variables and they should get displayed there. So I guess we will want to do the same for title. And I guess we'll use lowercase variable names. And then the same for body text, I guess. So just call that body. So let's see how we pass in variables first. And we won't actually work on getting them out of the database just to begin with. We'll just pass in some strings just to test if we've got this bit working. So uh, let's go to views.py and work on that now. Now the way we do this is this render to response method can actually take a second argument, which is a Python dictionary of variables. If you've used PHP, then a dictionary is just like an associative array. So um, it's not too difficult to uh, think about at all. We just need to pass in a second argument, and we use curly braces for the uh, dictionary. And then it's just a set of uh, key value pairs. So what we had our variable called uh, title, and that contained the title. So we can say that title and then you put a, uh, a colon and then the data you want. So our data is going to be uh, my first post. We'll have that for now. And that should all work fine. So um, let's uh, save that and test if it works. And we might get an error because we haven't specified all the variables. OK, so we don't get an error. It just echoes out my first post. And all the other ones are just left blank because the variables don't have any value. But that's a good start. We're managing to pass variables into our template from our views thing. If we add lots of variables, this line's going to get a bit long, so we should uh, we should structure it a bit. Let's say that uh, let's say that content equals this dictionary here, and then we pass it in as a content variable, and then we can uh, separate this onto multiple lines. This is just for uh, it's just to keep the syntax nice and tidy. So we can indent that, and then you have to you have to separate each one with a comma. So the other data we had was uh, author. And we can just say that that is uh, pick a name. You can use your name if you like. And then date. Now in a minute, we will uh, work with the database. And we will make it retrieve a timestamp, which will be a number. And we'll use Python's date time class to uh, format it into a string uh, right here. But for now, let's just pass in a date. So we will say that date is, uh, we'll say the date is today. So the 18th of September. 2011. Okay, and then the final one we had was the uh, body text. So we will say body, and let's just put in some lorem ipsum. So I'll go grab some off the internet. Okay, there we go. We've got some uh, default lorem ipsum text. So that should be all we need to uh, set up this site. So let's go and have another look again. Refresh the page, and there we go. It's all working. We've got our title, and then we've got the post title, 
It's accepting the date, it's accepting a username, and it's accepting body text. So on a very fundamental level, this is all a blog is. However, without dynamic content, it's not really a blog at all. So we need to go and hook up to the database and uh, start querying some data to display here instead. So if you remember, to retrieve data from the database, we don't actually have to write any SQL queries at all, because Django abstracts all of this for us through its models. So we need to go take a look at those now and uh, work out how we can get this set up. There's a few things we need to do, and the first thing is uh, a settings configuration. Now we haven't actually imported the app to our project yet, it's not actually using it. So our first blog project needs to use our blog app so it can access all of the models that it defines. To get this set up is very easy, you just need to scroll down to the installed apps section of the uh, settings file, and then add a string to the list which defines the app that we want to import. And in our case that app is uh, first blog, name of our project, dot blog, which is the name of our app. Okay, so now we've added that, let's go look at the views file. As you can see, we've already imported this posts model earlier, which represents the table in our database, but we haven't actually used it yet, and we can use it for both retrieving data and saving data. So let's take a look at the syntax for retrieving data now. Posts represents the table, and the first thing we need to do is type posts. Django returns all of the data from the database in a special structure called a query set, which is uh, iterable, which means you can use a for loop to access all the properties and go through it. The root query set is called object, and from that you can access all other query sets beneath it. So we need to type object, and then we can finally start to access individual properties of the database. Now in this case, we're just going to access everything, and for that you just type all. And that's actually a method, so you need to have the parentheses there. And that will return everything in the database. There's also a method called filter, which lets you pass in some arguments and specify certain parameters. Like in MySQL, there's the where statement, which lets you say um, where x equals y, and that um, limits it to only uh, r records where that is true. And in this case, you can do that with the filter uh, method as well. But in this case, we just want all the posts that have been added to the database. Now there's a really nice feature here, and that is a slice syntax, just the same as um, array and string slices in Python, and it lets you limit the number of queries with the square bracket notation. So in our case, maybe we just want our um, default homepage to display the, the 10 most recent posts. We can just use uh, slice it like any other um, array or string, and put uh, colon 10, and that will access the first 10 posts. So that's really nice, and it's got all of the features of uh, Python slicing syntax. So if you wanted to access just the 10th element, you could do that. And if you wanted to go only from 5 to 10, you could do that. But for now, we'll just uh, we'll select the first 10, so that if we have you know hundreds of posts in our database, we don't end up putting them all on the home page. So this object now represents the first 10 records in our database. And obviously, we need to uh, assign it to a variable. So let's just call that posts. The next thing we need to do is uh, pass this posts query set into our template so that we can access the data within it. So we don't need any of this anymore, this was just an example, so we can get rid of that. And then we need to uh, pass in a dictionary here, and we can just say that uh, posts is our posts variable. And then just uh, curly bracket to close that. And that should mean that this posts variable gets passed into our template for use over there. So let's go look at the template now and uh, look at how we can implement it. Okay, so at the moment we are hard coding these uh, this blog post, but what we really want to do is uh, iterate through this query set, get each record and display all the relevant data like the title, the date and the author. To do that we need to look at another part of Django's templating language. So you can see here we've got variables with the two uh, curly brackets, but there's also something called block tags which has a curly bracket and a percentage sign. And what that allows you to do is uh, put Python code within this uh, template. For example we can have if statements and for loops all within our template. So let's go ahead and add one now. And we don't want to add one around the uh, title because there's only one of those, but around all of this we want to add a for statement. So we're going to put a uh, curly brace and then a uh, percentage sign, and then you close it out the same way, percentage sign, curly brace. And within here we can actually put Python code. So what we're going to do is um, iterate through this variable that's been passed through, and the variable's called posts. So we can just go for post in posts, and then every time we iterate through this array, post will represent one record. Now usually you'd have a colon here in uh, regular Python, but because we're using this slightly different syntax in the templating language, we don't need to, so we can just leave it like that. 
And another difference is because it's not regular Python, it doesn't know where this ends. So we actually have to put something which uh, Python doesn't usually have, and that is end for. So uh, Django's templating language knows where to stop this block. And uh, let's just let's just indent all of that just uh, to make things a little bit clearer to read. So every time we iterate through this, post represents one of the entries in the database, and we can use properties of that to access the individual fields. So the field names are defined here back in our models. We've got author, title, body text, and timestamp. So we can say post dot title, and then that will give us the title of the post. And we can do the same for author. We can put that there. Now I was calling this date before, but we've got it as timestamp, so I'll, I'll update it to say that. And we'll say post dot timestamp, and then finally post dot body text. And that should be everything we need to retrieve data from the database. We've uh, imported our app with the settings, and then we are um, accessing the models here. We're getting all of the data out of the database, and then selecting the first 10 records, then passing it to the template, looping through it, and uh, echoing it out each time. So let's go ahead and preview that now. OK, we've got an error, so let's take a look and see what's gone wrong. It says that posts is referenced before assignment, and that's on line 6. So we'll go and look at that now. OK, yeah, the problem here is that I've got the same name for the module as I'm using for this variable. So let's call it something else instead. Let's call it entries. And then we will change that down here to say entries. And that should work now. So let's go back and refresh the page. OK, this is working. We've got a proper dynamic blog. We are retrieving this data from a MySQL database and then looping through it and echoing it all out onto the page. Now, you won't be seeing any of this, and you may even be getting an error, and that's because I've done a little bit of work beforehand. Currently, this posts table that you're trying to access is empty because we haven't actually added any data to it yet. And I've been through uh, earlier and added some sample data. But that's very easy to do, so we'll go and do that now so you can actually uh, see what the finished product looks like. So um, there's a couple of things we need to do. And the first thing to do is to run the uh, syncdb command again because what we did is we went, to the, uh, we went to the installed apps and added this blog one, which means that now if we run syncdb, our blog table should get added to the database. So um, Let's just uh, stop the server for a second, and then we can run syncdb. And for you, it should say that it's adding your uh, blog model to the database. So I won't get that, but for you, that should happen. And then once that's worked, we have the table in the database, and all we need to do is add some data to it. So we can actually go to a MySQL prompt and do that. And this is what I've done earlier. I've just written this MySQL query that uh, inserts the data into the database. Now you don't have to understand MySQL, and I will put this command in the text of the tutorial, so you can just paste it in if you want. But the syntax is very simple, and all you need to do is uh, run it once or twice. I'll just run it once more, and there we go, we've added another row. And uh, if we refresh it again, we should now say we've got three. And of course, uh, we need to uh, run the server, so we'll go back to that, and run server. And we should have three posts now. Yeah, there we go, we've got three. So if you want to run that MySQL command a few times, you should have some dynamic content, which means you've got a properly functioning blog system. Now obviously to do this you need to be in a MySQL prompt, and if for some reason you closed out of it or whatever, then you just need to uh, type MySQL and then log in with your user and make that root and then put dash p to uh, be prompted for a password, and then we just put the password as nettouch, you may have done something different. And then you should be in a prompt which will let you uh, which will let you run all these commands. You could just type MySQL, but then you're not a root user and you might not have permission to, uh, to add things. So yeah, remember to run that command and then you'll be in a MySQL prompt and you can do all of that. So before we go any further, let's just add a little bit of structure to our page. And we're going back to HTML here. But really, every post should be uh, in a div tag. So we'll just say div class equals post. We haven't got any styling attached to this yet, but you know, just uh, to make it semantically correct. And then we will close out our div tag here. And then we should uh, have maybe a horizontal rule after it, just to separate all the posts. And then maybe another one of those after the, uh, after the title, so that that just um, makes everything a bit easier to read. So if we refresh that, now that's looking a little bit nicer now. OK, so the last thing we need to do today is take a look at Django's admin section and how we can use it to manage our new blog. Now this is one of the great advantages of Django. This is another thing where a lot of work's been done for you, it all comes with it, and it saves you a lot of time. If you were writing this from scratch, you'd have to create your own management system for publishing to the blog. But with Django, there's a really powerful admin interface that uh, does all that work for you. So let's look at how to set it up now. 
it's uh, pretty easy. You just need to change a few settings. The first thing we need to do is go to the URLs file and there's just some lines we can uncomment, this one and this one and these two down here. And that just means that when we type in slash admin, we go to the admin file. Okay, after that we need to go to the settings file and uncomment these two lines here in the installed apps section. And these will uh, add the admin apps to our project. So just save that. And then the last thing you need to do is go to the terminal and uh, just quit the server. And if you run syncdb again, it will add all of the necessary tables to your database that the admin section needs. So just uh, run that and you should see some stuff pop up there for uh, installing all the tables. Okay, and then let's just uh, run the server again. And then let's go and check out our admin. Okay, it should be at the uh, regular URL but with slash admin if we just refresh the page. So we're presented with this login page and the details to log in are the ones we chose earlier. Uh, by default, I think it's the name of the user on your system. And then the password, I went for NetTuts, but you need to put in whatever you put, obviously. And then we just click log in. And you can do a load of stuff with this interface. It's really powerful. But today we're just going to look at how we can use it to add content to our blog. And uh, it's pretty easy. So to do that, we need to uh, go back to our text editor. And then I've created a file called admin.py. And this is in the uh, first blog project in the blog subdirectory. So you need it along with all the others. Uh, the admin file is just right there. And within this, we need to import the admin and our posts table and then register the posts table with the admin so it has access to it. So we need to say uh, from Django dot uh, contrib, we're going to import the admin module. And then we need to copy this line from the uh, views file where we're importing the posts table. And then we're going to put that in there. And then finally, we just need to register it. So we type admin dot site dot register and then we pass in our posts model as an argument okay so if we save that and reload the server we should see that we've got access to the posts table within the admin section so let's open the terminal and then we just quit the server and run it again and uh, refresh this page okay and now you can see this has added it we've got our posts table right here so if we click on that you should see this represents the uh, one thing in our table so we've got this one this one blog entry here and that is represented by this one entry. And if we click on it, Django's created this nice editing interface. And it's got some nice features. The interface is uh, based on what types of fields you've got. So if you've got a varchar field, you get this little uh, text box here. If you've got a text field, you'll get a much bigger one. We've got a date time field, and then we get automatic controls for putting in uh, dates and times. So it's pretty nice, and it saves you a lot of work. So um, let's give our post a timestamp, because at the moment it's none, because we didn't enter anything. So we can just do today and now, and then we can just uh, save that. And we'll see it's all happened successfully. So if we refresh, we've now got a uh, publishing date. And we can add another thing to our blog. We can say this one is by Joe, set the title as news or something. Then maybe put some uh, lorem ipsum in there. And we'll set that to today and now as well, if we save that and refresh the page. There we go, we've got the new post in there. So there you have it. If you've got to this stage, you've just created your first Django website. And we've got a fully functioning blog with a control panel where you can add new content and a homepage where it's all displayed. And obviously another time we could go and add a comment system or individual pages for each post. But now that we've covered getting Django running locally and we've written a basic site with it, we should finish off by talking about installing it on a server. Now there are two types of web hosting and which one you have will affect whether you can use Django. If you have shared hosting, then you're entirely at the mercy of your host. A lot of cheap hosting won't support Python, and while PHP is almost guaranteed, support for other languages often isn't. You'll have to check the control panel to see if Python and therefore Django are available. Now almost all hosting runs on Apache, and it has some modules that we can use to host Django, and these are mod WSGI or mod Python. Most web hosts also let you run scripts in several languages using CGI. Django can run on fast CGI and also theoretically on regular CGI, but it's not officially supported and it will be far too slow for an actual production site. You'll need to check if these are installed. They're usually found under a heading like CGI scripting and language support. Now unfortunately I don't have any shared hosting so I can't show you examples of this today, but if you search around then you should be able to find some guides on uh, getting this set up on whatever hosting company or server you've got. Now, if you have VPS hosting, or are even lucky enough to have a dedicated server, your life is much easier. These usually come with Python pre-installed, because they're running a Linux distribution and they always have Python. And you only have to then follow the same steps we went through just now to get a local copy of Django running. If you don't have Python, you can install it with a package manager, and your system may even come with Django. 
I'll quickly run through it now on my VPS, but the process is very similar to what we did earlier. So I'm gonna open up the terminal and then create a new tab. And then I'm just gonna SSH to my site. So I'm gonna SSH root of uh, my site. All right, so now we're at the prompt of the remote machine. It's pretty much the same process as we went through earlier in the lesson. We just need to uh, download the latest Django release. So I'm gonna type wget and then go to the uh, Django download site and then just copy this and uh, paste that in. Okay, and once that download's completed, we just need to use tar and then we use xz VF options to extract it and then we're just going to uh, type in the file name and it appears to have called it a uh, funny name index.html.1 for some reason so uh, we we'll just have to type that and then it should extract all of that to a file then we can CD into that folder and then we just need to run Python setup.py and install and there we go we've got Django installed on our system and now to test it all we need to do is uh, enter our Python prompt and we can say from Django import get version and then we just need to type get version and we should see 1.3.1 .1. and there we go we've got a running version of Django on our remote server so let's try uploading this project to the server and running it from there. Now I'm using Cyberduck here, but you can use any file transfer client that you like. And I've just logged into my server and uh, this is the root directory. And I'm gonna put my uh, project files in the home folder. You can put them anywhere you like, but uh, don't put them in the document root because then they'll be publicly available. Everyone can see the source of your website and then that opens up security issues and stuff. So yeah, just keep them in any private folder on your server. I'm gonna use home. Okay, so I'm just going to uh, grab the uh, entire project and then drag it and wait for it to upload. Okay, when that's finished, let's move to the terminal and work on getting it running. Um, there's going to be a few issues because the settings are slightly different on my website as they are on my local machine. So it's not going to run the first time, but um, we can see what happens. So the first thing we need to do is try and add all the models to uh, the MySQL server by running the syncdb command. So we'll navigate to the uh, uh, project directory. So the first thing to do is to change into the folder we just created. So I'm going to cd into home and then first blog. And then we're going to try and run the uh, syncdb command to add all of our posts to the database. And it's not going to work, but we can at least see what the error is. So we need to do python and then manage.py and then syncdb. And the error we're getting here is that the password is wrong. And that's because we're using the password nettuts for the local machine. And obviously on my server, that's different. So go ahead and update those settings now. OK, so once you've changed your password, let's have another go. We're probably going to run into more errors, but we'll see. OK, so we've got rid of the uh, password error and now it's saying it doesn't know which database we're trying to connect to. And that's obviously because the MySQL uh, instance on my server doesn't have the first blog database. So we can enter the uh, MySQL prompt and as the user root and then it'll ask for a password. And then we can uh, create this database. So we just say create database. And then I'm going to call it first blog, just like we did locally. OK, that should be done. So if we quit out of that, let's have another go. And this time it's worked. So we can go through all of this process for setting up all of the uh, admin stuff like we did before. And then once you've entered all that, we should be able to run the server. So we can just type python manage.py, then run server. If you just run this command, it'll run Django locally, and then you won't be able to access it from the internet. So we need to specify an IP address, and it's just going to be all zeros and then run it on port 8000 so that we can access it from anywhere, not just uh, on the uh, server itself. So we can run that and uh, we appear to have got everything working. So it's running so we can go and uh, visit it at port 8000 of my site. OK, and then in a new tab, I have visited my site at port 8000 and we've got our Django server running. If we visit the admin page, that works too. And I can type in a username and password. And we've got all the same stuff available to us, including the uh, control panel for adding blogs. So we can add posts just like before.
and then if we go back to the regular site we can see that the post has been added. So today we have learned how to create websites with Python using the Django web framework and we've learned how to uh, install it on a local machine and on a remote server and uh, serve up web pages including dynamic content from a database and managing it all with the admin system. As always I'll be happy to discuss any questions about this tutorial or Python in general in the comments and always visit net.tutsplus.com for the best web development tutorials around. Thank you so much for watching, I'm Giles Laval.